Hello everyone, my name is Tim Mayer and this is Star Sector version 0.95 ARC15. I saw on Reddit that somebody was having problems with the tutorial, so let's just help you out here. So the tutorial will ask you to scavenge, to move up to this degree field and then scavenge, so let's go ahead and do that. Now we'll just take everything. And we need to quick save, so let's quick save. <clears throat> And then it will have us go into our first battle. Now that he's close enough, he, we can see that he is a rogue miner. So, let's go ahead and move to engage. Don't mind that. Alright, uh, if you heard anything, something just fell in my room. Alright, so let's go ahead and deploy the wolf. Uh, you can deploy whichever you would like. <clears throat> but Cerberus, as I know, they don't have any shields. Now what we're using is the special for the wolf. Oh right, our special takes down our shields. Alright, and down he goes. So, the pirates, they dislike us a little bit more. Let's go ahead and take everything, but we can't take everything. As you can see, we are over cargo capacity. So we need to get rid of some stuff. All right, so let's just look at this. The Vulcan cannons, those cost, those are worth 200 per unit and they cost two space. So they're really worth about 100 per space. These are worth 30 per space. These are worth 25, but they use a different uh, area. The heavy machinery, you want to hold on to around 100 of that if you can, so you can salvage everything. And then supplies are absolutely the most important thing that you have, aside from crew and fuel. So, let's go ahead and throw away the metals. They are cheap. Alright, so... Once you do any kind of fighting, you will gain experience. Uh, when you level up, when you gain enough experience, you will level up. Now, you typically get one point per level. So, we're going to just put this uh, wherever. It doesn't matter at this point. Um, I'm just going to quick save and ignore that until we get something else. Alright, so we gained one story point. We can go up to level 15. So we can press C to go to this screen and assign our story points. To the combat tab, Typically is about the the ship you are piloting and not other ships. So everything here is piloted ship. This is fighters from piloted ship. So if you're going to fly a carrier or something, then you'll want uh, this most likely. All right, so these mostly just increase the quality of your fleet in a fleet-wide sort of way. So if you're going to go with a single... Um, civilian ship, then auxiliary support can be nice, but I've heard that it's going to be removed, so don't worry about it. Uh, next patch, at least. And then over here we have weapon drills, and this just increases the damage of all your weapons. Now up to a grand total of 120... Uh, uh, up to 120 deployment points, I think. Don't worry about that just yet. Let's go ahead and make our way to Galatia. So it wants us to press E to open the intel tab, stabilize jump points. We're going to show on map, it wants us to go to Ansira. So let's right click on Ansira here. Well, it wants us to press those buttons and then click on this and then go there and lay in course, which is decent if you know where something is, but so uh, you don't uh, know where it is on the galaxy map. Alright, so, we can use Sustain Burn now. My advice to you is to replace Sustain Burn over there. Because you're going to be hitting that a lot. Alright, so. When you go full speed through an asteroid field, there's a chance you will hit an asteroid and take damage. 
Or you'll hit an asteroid and it go and it just bounce off your warp field, your warp drive field. Typically. So you wanna you wanna turn on your transponder whenever you're in civilized space, otherwise they get angry with you. Because pirates fly without their transponders on. Are you a pirate? Arr. So let's go over here. Now it wants us to talk to people. So we're going to go talk to this person. Now I'm just going to hit that. You can go through. I'm just going to hit two. Um, what's in it for me? What's the plan? Did they notice? Oh, wow. So we're just going to press accept through that. And we're going to quick save real quick. And let's take stock of what we have. So we have all this stuff. You don't want to be carrying around extra stuff that you don't need. So let's go to the black market. Let's sell all the stuff that we don't need. Now we want to hold on to these, but we kind of want to have supplies as well. Now, as we can see, supplies are rather expensive to buy. We don't want to do that. Instead, we want to just rush their quest as, as much as possible. So we are to sneak into their NQU mining station and contact their contact. So, here's how transponders work. Over here you have your sensor detection range and how far your sensors go out. That's important in this game. It's not very well illustrated to you. I guess so far as to say the how it illustrates it to you is absolute hot garbage. Uh, but there's no real way to just tell you how things are. But let's go ahead and try to illustrate it here. Now the transponder, it increases your uh, your information, your sensor detect by a huge amount. I don't think it tells you. It increases it by about a thousand. Now this over here, those lines, that tells you that this ship is pinging you and can see you. Okay. If we then speed up time, turn on that transponder, and we go over here, we'll notice that we can't even detect when they can see us. Because we're just too far away, their sensor profile, is, their sensor detection range is so much stronger than ours. So let's go over here to Dead and Q Mining Station. And here's the other thing. Sustained burn, we have that here. We're actually going to change emergency burn to this. And we're going to remove it there. Okay, we haven't ran anything yet, but sustained burn, what that does is it increases your sensor detection range by 100%. So typically these two are somewhat similar to each other. So if we turn that off, you notice that our sensor detection range goes down to 360. So about the same. This is important as it is going to make uh, make it harder for the enemy to find us. But the other thing is asteroid belts actually make it a bit easier for you to hide. It reduces your sensor profile. Go ahead and scavenge here because we can get some supplies. But we have too much fuel, so we're going to drop that fuel. Okay, so there's that guy. So you see that he can sort of see us pretty well, and we have an idea that there's somebody here. Now, if you put our mouse over him, we can see what his sensor detection range is. If we then go dark, we see that his sensor detection range gets a little bit further away from us. Now, because he went into the asteroid field, he uh, effectively disappeared. So let's go over here, see if we can follow him a little bit. You notice that his detection range for us is tiny. It's hard to see because it's gray, but when it gets out into space, it's a little bit clearer. Let's go ahead and go to DMQ Mining Station, speak with the agent. Okay, we've completed that section. Let's press pause so we can do something different. Now, when and we come out of... Now, you notice, so we went from 360 to 45. Okay, so hiding in asteroid belts, it makes it 
so that your sensor makes so that your sensor profile is four times it is a fourth of what it normally is. So let's go out of here. We can notice that he's there. Now let's go off of go turn go dark, which decreases your sensor detection range by fifty percent. So now he's going to be able to see us. But he's choosing not to come after us. It's probably because he went into the asteroid belt. He can't see us. So let's go to Ansira again. This is pressing tab, brings up that window. You press Q after tab. So we're here, we're in system. Press tab, we go to the we press Q, we go to the sector, and we can explore all around here. Alright, so if you can scavenge, you want to scavenge, you will typically get supplies. If you, we're pressing I to get here. If you are struggling with getting supplies, or you have too many ships. You can press F to go to the fleet menu, and you can scuttle something. So that we can see here that if we scuttle the shuttle. <laughs> it's the scuttle shuttle. Uh, if we scuttle the shuttle, we get nine supplies, nine fuel, and two heavy machinery. Typically, ships that have damage mods, which we don't have any of those will scuttle for more value than they would sell for, and ships that have no demons, they will, if they have no demons, they will sell for more than they would uh, scuttle for. Right, but we wouldn't, we got those codes, let's go to the station commander, let's just go through this. They're going to tell us that they need us to go somewhere specific. Let's go ahead and sell this on the black market. And we had 25 resources. We now have 23. Not too bad. Not too bad. And... All right. We could buy some ships from them if we really wanted to. Let's not do that quite yet. Let's instead... Quick save, as it's asking us to quick save. And let's go look at the quest. So, stabilize jump points. Retrieve the AI core from derelict pro beyond the orbit of Pontus. Right, you might not know what Pontus is. As you can see, we can't see it just yet. Or we can see it, but we can't see the name. So we need to click on Inhabited. And that will show us all the names. So we see Pontus over here. So that means what we're looking for is going to be beyond the orbit of Pontus, so it'll be out here somewhere. So it'll be anywhere between here and uh, there. <laughs> so the easiest way to do this is you just go to Pontus, and uh, then you go out to about here or so. So we can click on tab, we can right click on Pontus, we can turn on sustained burn, and then we can go out there. So. Active sensor burst. What this is going to do is it turns off our engines to reduce interference so we can get super far out in our sensor range. And it increase, so it increases our sensor range by 3,000 units and increases the range at which we can be detected by 5,000. And also it makes you move slowly, which takes you down to half your speed. So let's just use, illustrate this. All right, there we go. It'll also turn off your sustained burn, which is kind of annoying. We'll have to turn that back on ourselves. So, it's beyond the orbit of Pontus. So, let's go out there and see what we can find. So, they gave us active sensor burst, so let's do that. And we see the probe is right here. Still have 21 supplies. Fighting, by the way, is extremely costly, uh, generally. So unless you're going to get a decent amount out of a fight, you probably don't want to do a lot of fighting. You can do fighting if you have heavy machinery. I recommend carrying around 100 heavy machinery. That will let you get as much out of the salvage as possible. But let's go to this Domain Era probe. So we're going to explore it. We see that there are some automated defenses. Let's go ahead and engage this. The fewer ships you use, the better off generally you will be supply-wise, but the harder fights will be. So, let's go ahead and kill this guy. 
Okay, not too bad. Alright, so he has machine guns. Those aren't good against armor. So I know I can just vent. There's not a whole lot he can do. And let's go kill him. Let's use our special. Try and get closer to him. Of course, we screwed that up, so uh, don't worry about it, I guess. Let's go ahead and get behind him. Shoot him with missiles. Now, a flame out means that his engines no longer work. So he's dead. And there we go. Let's claim victory. And let's pick through the wreckage. After every battle, you will be able to pick through the wreckage. This is not a salvage yet. So I don't know if more of this is actually going to help you. But we want the heavy machinery and the machine guns. As you can see, it's too much fuel for us. So we're going to discard some of that. If you have more of one of these than your maximum, you actually use a lot more supplies maintaining that. Which is not recommended by any capacity. Now we can have a lot of fuel, so a lot, well, a lot of uh, metals, so let's take that. And let's go ahead and begin salvage operations. Alright, so we need this to complete the quest. Let's take that. We want all the supplies. We are willing to throw things away to take more supplies. Transplutonics are expensive. They only take up one slot, so we're going to take that. Now we're going to do something a little odd here. We're going to pause immediately out of combat. We're going to open these cargo pods. And then we're going to put... We're going to consolidate that extra fuel that we don't need into there. Now, as you can see, that's sort of limboed out of space. And this is showing us that there's a debris field, though. There. We can salvage that debris field once. You notice that we can get more supplies. So, we're going to take more supplies. And since we're probably not going to come back here, we can take additional supplies. And uh, in the earlier post, he was having problems with uh, running out of supplies. So, despite the supplies being more valuable to us overall, well, despite the Transplutonics selling for more than the supplies, we're going to get rid of the Transplutonics to keep all the supplies. Now we can, once again, sort of consolidate things. So let's immediately pause, open these cargo pods. And then go down to that. Okay, that should be good. All we did was we took all these cargo pods and things, and we sort of collected them all and put them all together in one spot. So if we decide to come back here, we can do that. Now there is something about this. And that is, if we wanted to, we could put the pods into a stable orbit. This is if we decided we wanted to come back here. This costs us supplies to do, and it, but it makes it so where they will stay around for like an entire year. Now, supplies was the main problem for the person on Reddit, so we're not going to do that. As you can see, when we go to inventory, none of these exceed, none of the left exceeds the right. So, let's make our way back to Ansayora. We can just right-click on it. We're going to do Sustain Burn again and uh, just rush our way there. Now, when we get there, it's going to tell us that uh, all kinds of things and that there are some ships that we can use to defeat some pirates. All right, so we have a lot of stuff that we don't need. That does not sell for much, but let's go and talk to the to our contact here. All right, so they are going to tell us that we need to go fight some pirates. But there's a ship graveyard that we can potentially go to. And that ship graveyard is down here near Tetra. So let's go near Tetra and see what we can find. Because if we fight the pirates right now, we will have to engage, fight them, back off, fight them again, back off some more, fight them again, back off some more. Now there is something else here. You'll notice that he gave us a mud skipper. And he told us that we're going to need a lot of crew. Well, let's say we didn't do that. 
Let's say we didn't go hire a ton of crew. And we just have this. Well, let's recover all these ships if we can. We have four story points. Let's just recover everything. But here's the thing. Because we don't have crew strength, everything's going to start ticking combat readiness damage. Unless we mothball the ship. Mothballing it basically means that we make that we lower its combat readiness to zero, but it doesn't take any combat readiness damage. And it reduces and it makes it to where it doesn't require any any crew or any supplies to maintain it. It also halts all repairs on it. So this thing is worthless in combat, but it doesn't cost us anything to keep in our fleet. I would love I would love for there to be a mechanic in game where if you don't have enough crew for a ship you just salvaged, that it would auto mothball it. But uh, I don't know if they're actually going to implement that. All right, let's see. What can we do here? What's that? A, a kite? Eh, sure. We'll take it. Why not? Now, we don't have enough... Man, eh, we do have enough people to man that. We're going to mop all it anyway. All right. I, I actually want to see what options I have here in these ships. Do the kite, hammerhead... Dram, Lasher, Wolf, and Condor. So I'm just going to go with another carrier. Let's see if we can salvage that. Yeah, let's go ahead and take that. Now, again, we're going to pause. We're going to come here. We're going to mothball that so that we have enough. What's the next biggest one that we want? Uh, of the Hammerhead. Hammerhead is a destroyer. Destroyers are a step up from uh, uh, frigates. So let's recover this one. Immediately go into fleet and mothball it. It's going to fade out of existence. So we have this buffalo. Let's go ahead and take it. Story points were added to the game in 0.95a. And really, they just represent you being able to gain something that you normally wouldn't. We're out of story points, so we're only going to get the ships that the game decides we should be able to get. And we have these two. Let's go ahead and mock all those. Let's go to this lasher. Unfortunately, we can't um, buy it. Oh, well, we can't salvage it. We have a dram. A dram is basically a fuel tanker. You need those. Let's go ahead and mothball all of those so they don't cost us a whole lot of supplies. But there's nothing else out here, so let's make our way back to Ansaira. You can drag this around by right-clicking and holding and moving your mouse cursor around. Let's go back to Ansaira. And as you can see, this is flashing. That means that if we used emergency burn because some of our ships are muffled and have extremely low combat readiness they may be damaged or destroyed by doing that all right so let's just get rid of those i'm going to go back to fleet i'm going to unmothball the ships that we want to keep so this one eh, could be useful for something if we have the right character traits so let's see this advanced turret gyros which one lets us slap stuff so we have two story points oh you'd have to have three to get to this this will allow us to put a fighter bay on that freighter but unfortunately we don't have uh, that so we're not going to worry about it too much so let's un so let's make sure we are in ensiro then let's get a fleet then let's unmop all everything and let's get rid of everything that we don't necessarily want. So this sells for 189 credits or it scuttles for three, which is already 300 credits typically. So we're going to scuttle that. I know we used a sword point on it. Don't worry about it. And the rest of these are useful to us. So let's go ahead. Go to the inventory screen by hitting I. If you're at a colony and you hit I, it will uh, bring up the shop effectively. So 
In the white market, you have tariffs, 30%. In the black market, you have no tariffs. Amazing. Over here, we can see how many crew we need. We need... Over here, we can see how many crew we need to fly all our ships, 281. Now, you want to exceed that by maybe 10 or so percent. So, we currently have 36. We can... Now, if we right-click, we'll get everything. So, we don't want to do that. If we left click and ho if we just left click and drag, we will pick up the entire stack. If we shift left click, we can drag to uh, get whatever we need. Now we want 26 more. We want 28 more than what is needed or so. Let's just do 25 extra. And we now have enough crew to fly all these ships. However, how many of them are actually combat ready? Well, pretty much none. Also, if we go over here, we can see the repair ships to the dockyard. We, it will require 131 supplies to repair them all, but we only have 49 supplies. So we're going to need to go to the black market and buy a lot of supplies. Unfortunately, we don't really have enough supplies to do that. So, we're going to need to either sell or destroy some of these. So, this one, it scuttles for two supplies and one heavy machinery. It sells for 259. Here's the thing. Heavy machinery typically costs around 150, fuel costs around 25, and supplies cost around 100. What this means, we can, we can ballpark that to say, if we scuttle it, we will get somewhere around 300, well, 400 or so credits worth of stuff, or we can sell it for half or almost a little over half of that. So let's scuttle that kite. Over here we have uh, this hammerhead. Yeah. Also, we can go to the black market and we can see that it would sell for a little bit more. That's 650 something. This is five. That would be 650 and plus 250. So we would still get more out of that if we scuttle it. Okay, so we can get rid of those. And we have a nice little fleet here. Now, if we had not mothballed all of those, we would not have to repair these as much. So keep that in mind. But now we have to ask ourselves, which of these ships do we actually want to use? Well, let's go see if we can repair them yet. We would need 113 supplies. Well, we don't really have that much, and we can't afford 113. We would need roughly that much to just repair them, but not really fly around with them. So, we need to find out which ones we don't want. So we're just going to get rid of that. The buffaloes aren't necessarily the best, so now we're just down to these two. So, we currently have 64 supplies. We still can't repair everything, it's going to cost 89 supplies. So, can we afford 89 supplies? Uh, no, we can't. But if we sell all of these, we might be able to afford 89. But we can barely afford it, so we need to get rid of other things. So we could potentially sell some fuel. That would give us a decent amount of money on the black market. And we will get more fuel from destroying enemies. So let's go ahead and just sell that, I guess. And try to get ourselves a healthy amount of supplies. Yeah, so that is the most supplies we could possibly get right now. Alright, so we have no money, we have no extra weapons to put on these things, we have no fighters or anything we can put on them. So we need, to, at this point, to go get in some fights, so that we can actually outfit these things. Now, because we traded on the black market, they are not going to be happy with us. They're going to want to scan us. We'll just let them scan us. And let's 
go and see what we can do here. Speaking of weapons. So they will give us weapons and supplies and the storage bin here. They'll give us a hundred supplies and a bunch of weapons. As well as some fighters and bombers. So we're going to take all of that. And we're going to try and outfit our ships as best we can. So the fighters and bombers. We're just going to slap those on there. Hila are nice, and that they are long range, so you can put that on the condor and not really suffer any any consequences. Machine guns are good point defense, so we'll put that on those. If you hold shift, shift click to place another light machine gun, we can do that. Now weapons groups, we're going to probably want to do something like this. I like doing that, it makes it a bit easier for me, I think. And then we have some of this other stuff. Well. We don't really have skills to improve these yet. Let's see. All right, so all of this will increase the power of your ships, but not necessarily the power of your fleet overall. These will make it easier for you to fly the ship and kill your enemies. So, if we wanted to really focus on flying that condor, which I don't necessarily recommend, we could use these. This plus that could actually be pretty decent, but we're going to go over here and we're going to say, right, we're going to want to, we're going to ignore this from now, actually. So we got a hundred supplies. We sold all our fuel. Let's go and try to refit. Let's go and just put as many capacitors on this as we can. And over here, oh, actually we can just auto fit things. So, no, cause it'll spend money that we don't have. So that's fine. Now over here, you want to try and just auto fit it with whatever you can. Of course we can't cause we don't have the money. So we're going to need to go in and just put whatever we can. You want a mix of anti-armor and anti-shield. So you can see here we have heavy mortars. They have a range of 700. These are hybrid turrets. They can use they can use technology-based weapons and ballistic weapons. So energy weapons and, and ballistic weapons. We're going to want to slap some anti-shield anti on there as well. But then we're going to want to put some missiles on there. Now, as you can see, we have sabots and harpoons. So, what does this mean? Sabots are anti-shield, harpoons are anti-armor. So we want to be able to do a ton of damage, but here's the thing. Almost every ship has some sort of special ability. This one is accelerated ammo feeder. Provides a flux cost reduction and brief boost in the fire rate of all ballistics weapons. What that means is that if we can, we want to use, we want to focus on using our ballistic weapons and just doing tons and tons and tons of damage with them. So, while well, the missiles are nice, we want to see if there's anything we can possibly do to make the ballistic weapons a bit stronger. What we see is not really. So let's go ahead and slap those sabots and harpoons on there. And then destroyers, they typically have more capacitor space and more vent space. Now, as we can see, we are maxed out on both of those and we still have points left. So, we want to try and put other things wherever we can. We have two light machine guns left, so let's put those there. We still have 20 or we still have 19 points left. So what can we do? Well, we can come over here. This lets us turn faster. Destroyers, their main weakness when it comes to frigates, so one step down in, in ship size, is that they can't turn fast enough to keep the frigates in their firing sights. Auxiliary thrusters increases the ship's maneuverability or ability to turn by 50%, which will help us out there. After that, armored weapon mounts. When, weapons, when a weapon is hit by an attack, it takes a degree, it takes an amount of damage. That amount of damage can make it so that the weapon mounts just stops working. Now when that happens, uh, it takes a little bit of time and then eventually the crew repairs it. The thing is, you're sitting duck during that time. 
So you don't necessarily want that. Now, over here, we see that this is weapon flux per second, and this is flux dissipation. This is how much flux is generated when you fire all your weapons all at once. Now, our heavy mortars are sort of facing the same way, so we're going to put that over here. These are facing different directions, so but they're also facing forward, so we're going to put these on different ones. The light machine guns are also facing different ways. But we also notice that you have these sabots here. You typically you have the sabots and the harpoons, your missiles. You typically don't want your missiles to be on auto fire. So let's go ahead and just take everything off of those. Let's put the missiles first. Then let's put the heavy mortars. Let's put the auto cannons and then the machine guns. So we're gonna make these all auto fire. And we will personally fire the sabots and the harpoons. And this doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but up here means they will auto fire. So if there is an enemy, or if there's an is if there's something that they can target in their firing range, they will automatically target those. So if they are within these out to if it's within that arc out to its maximum range, which is 300 units. Then it will auto-fire that. It will automatically attack that. Okay, so we have those. What else can we put on there? Well, here's the thing. If you can, you want your flux distributor, your flux dissipation rate, to be as close to to be as close to this or exceed this. And unfortunately, right now it doesn't exceed it. And I don't think there's a way that we can make it exceed that. Is there anything else that we could want here? Well, we could, but uh, that's not really a beginner thing. So don't worry about it. Now you can run simulations with ships where we can take this. We can press Q to see how many points this is worth. And we can see something else. So we'll say two... We'll say two lashers and a mudsker is about the same amount of points as this. As you can see, the sabots have a much shorter range than the harpoons. We can fly around here and shoot the enemy. Now our special is F. That lets us fire much, much, much faster. And as you can see, we are just able to annihilate this little guy. Very nice. Now we can press V, that vents our flux. Not good for us, but let's go ahead and uh, take him out. So we want to be on our sabots. Let's go ahead and... It would appear that our sabots are currently damaged. But they are back online. Let's go ahead and vent. And then let's get back after him. So we want to, if we can, kill him as easy, kill him as quickly and efficaciously as possible. After that, we can just turn around, kill this mudskipper with no real problems. He is a bit faster than we are, though, so we will have problems catching up with him unless he decides to just stay within range. At which point we won't. But simulations, very nice for practicing and flying ships. Now our condor here. Looks fine. And they want us to go fight those pirates. They gave us a bunch of stuff to do it. Now we have no fuel, because we sold it all so we could get more supplies. Which we would have gotten if we had just talked to them. Let's go ahead and quick save. Let's go fight some bloody pirates. Now they, they told us that if we fight both the pirates together... That might be bad for us. So we want to try and separate them. If we can, this person seems to be pursuing us, so let's jump on them while their allies aren't here. It usually isn't that easy to get them alone. But hey, let's attempt to, to engage. No, let's move to engage. <clears throat> and because people typically have more problems with carriers than anything else, understanding how carriers work. Let's transfer our engagement to this carrier. 
<clears throat> and we're going to deploy everything. It'll cost us 21 supplies to repair it, but um, that's going to be better in the long run. Now, if you press if you press Z, Z, you can toggle engage and regroup. <clears throat> engage means that your fighters and bombers will rush out to attack the enemy, whereas regroup means they will stay next to the carrier and defend the carrier. So, going out here, we see there's a drone tender, <clears throat> there's a venture, and there is a hammerhead. Now, we're going to want to try and focus on that hammerhead simply because they are a destroyer and will be kind of beefy. So let's go ahead and send our fighters and bombers out after that hammerhead and have them see what they can do. Now, as you can see, we're slowly causing them to slowly getting their flux up. Now, if we can, we don't want that flux to be able to go down all that much. So, let's try to allow our fighters, our broadswords, to take out the enemy. You can see that venture is somewhat far forward, and also that drone tender is a bit problematic. The other thing is, we're a bit far forward. We have a destroyer over there, and we don't want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with it in a carrier. However... So if we can, we want to target the drone tender and try to kill that. He is going to focus on us if he can, so let's have him and let's have our bombers engage that hammerhead. And just try to do as much damage to him as we can. Because if we can kill him, that's great. Oh no, that's not good. Ow, ooh, ee, ah, ooh. That's the uh, problem, Benzing. Takes a long time to get rid of stuff, especially if everything's in capacitors. So we're just gonna go kill this hammerhead if we can. All of our ships are currently, all of our fighters are currently down, so we're going to try and let them rebuild as we focus down that hammerhead. Or as I, were I flying the wolf, I would just go kill the drone tender. So, what can we do about that? So we know if we could fly the wolf, we could just go kill the drone tender. Killing this would be easier. Well, we can click on the wolf, and we can hit... Where is it? Is this one? X. We can hit transfer command. We can also just press X. And a little shuttle will fly out of this. And that's us. Flies over to the wolf. And now we are piloting the wolf. So we're going to fly over and flank that drone tender and try to kill it. If we can. Now it knows exactly what we're trying to do. Now we want to be on the swarm missiles, which we have four left of. And if we can keep that drone tender busy, we can make our our allies' lives easier. So, let's go and kill that drone tender, shall we? We are getting shot by the hammerhead, that's fine. So long as we can get away from it. And let our flux vent off. And don't worry about the board drones, they typically aren't that dangerous. Alright, let's kill this guy. As you can see, the hammerhead is having problems with maneuvering. But if we can, we want to now start killing that hammerhead. Which would be very easy for us, actually. Let's go ahead and vince our flux again, and then go kill that hammerhead. Okay, so our destroyer down here is fighting the venture, seeming to have a decent time of it, considering it's a destroyer class ship fighting a a cruiser class ship. All right, but let's go shoot this guy in his engines, shall we? That will effectively cause, yeah, causes him to have a flame out, which will allow us 
to keep shooting him in that one area. And just throw his shit that way. So typically playing a... You want to try and teleport away from missiles if we can, though those are friendly from our friend here. So let's go and finish him off, shall we? So we have three uses of that one ability of ours. And down he goes. Let's go kill that venture. There he is. Going toe to toe with our destroyer. We can see that on our ships, we see CR 40%. CR 40%, CR 56%, and this one's CR 69%. Higher, uh, lower class ships, they lose CR or combat readiness faster than higher class ships do. The frigates, the shuttle, and the wolf are at 40%, and the destroyer is at 56%, and so is the carrier. It'll be at 56% as well. Unless they can do other specific things, which... I wouldn't worry about that too much, we're just this is over. Let's go ahead and kill this Avenger. Alright, let's take him out. Not let him get away from us. And down he goes. Now if you're too close to a ship when it explodes, you'll actually take damage from its death. So you don't want to do that. We can consider ship recovery, we don't want the drone tender. Let's go ahead and pick through the wreckage. Now we need fuel, we need supplies, and we would like to take their weapons. Let's continue. We are now level three, which is fine. Let's go ahead and go dark and asteroid belt, which means that now we are practically invisible. So normally our sensor profile is now 400, is going to be much higher, but going dark, the profile Profiles there are multiplicative. I think I think it goes with the most extreme one first. And or goes with the top one first, I think. See he's trying to find us, but he just doesn't know where we are. Now but we leveled up again, so we can do something there if we wanted to. We also have a little bit of money. So this is basically just saying, hey, you're using 10 supplies a day to repair your ships. Looks like our shuttle got the most jacked up. But this sort of ghost area here is just where we are repairing our ships. So we're going to wait until this goes down. Four and... Repairing, so it requires a certain number of supplies per day. That's this one repairing. I think we can go and engage this guy now. So now it's ourselves and charge. Good running. Come and find us. Let's move to engage and let's kill him. All right, let's do this. Now let's go ahead and fly the hammerhead actually. We are a bit slower in the hammerhead, but we are still very dangerous. We have our sabots and our harpoons, and we want to go after the more dangerous enemy ships. This is a buffalo, it doesn't have any shields, and that was a hammer torpedo. Now the fewer enemy ships there are, the better. And we're going to want to sabot this guy pretty soon. These are special. So we can probably potentially overwhelm him. But this drone tender is now out of place. We have forced our way into their valleys. This drone tender is really annoying. So we're just going to kill it real quick. And there go those drones once they die. So this buffalo doesn't have any doesn't have any uh, shields, so we don't need to worry about sabotaging it. We can just harpoon it. Oh no, we want to keep our shields up. Let's go ahead and uh, just shoot him to death. 
give him a harpoon if we can. Didn't quite work out, but that shuttle, he is out of place. Let's go ahead and take him out. And who's left? A single drone tender over there. Well, wow. it's a little known fact, but um, there can be no survivors. So let's go kill him. There can be no survivors, there can be no mercy, ever. Not for our enemies, not for the pirates. They must all die. Alright, so we have these Pila missiles from the Condor that are, they have extreme range. They don't fire very quickly though. And well, down he goes. Consider ship recovery, we don't want any of that, so let's pick through the wreckage. Let's take their supplies and fuel, because we're going to need that. Let's take those. Alright. Cool. Oh. Now we can go to that jump point. Completely un uh, uncontested. We can stabilize it. And there we go. Let's make our way back to Ansaira. And say hello to our friend. Our ships are still somewhat jacked. After the battle, they are repairing, and it looks like we are good to go at this point. Mostly good to go. So this is going to drop to even lower once we are fully repaired. And we could put uh, points into things we're not going to. This is just a, we're not going to be using this. So the, our fleet, right here, costs 100, it costs 1.1 supplies per day to maintain. So... We could fly around for about a hundred days, or oh, probably over a hundred days at this point. Easily over a hundred days uh, on these. So that's more than enough supplies to pretty much get anywhere in the core quite easily. Core is this area, so if we go and only turn on inhabited. These are the core. This is the core of the sector. So let's talk to uh, the person over here again. They're going to say, good job. Keep stabilized the thing. Now we can leave. Also, there's this place that you can go to, uh, known as Corvus, where there is a pirate invasion going on. We would like you to go talk to them. So, this is giving you the idea of how interstellar travel works. Interstellar tra travel requires fuel. And if you click on the map and you go to Sector, you can actually turn on Fuel Range. That tells us how far we can go. Out here is one-way trip, if we wanted to go there and back again. We could only go to there and then we'd run out of fuel. Or, this inner circle is there and back again. We can go to this edge and back, assuming nothing slows us down or causes any problems for us. But we don't have to go around anything. So we can easily make our way to Corvus. So, we can left-click on Corvus, here. And then we can hit Jungala. <laughs> And that will automatically set a course for us. And we can just make our way there. Let's turn on sustained burn. And go out into inter... Go out into a hyperspace. Congratulaciones! You are in hyperspace. Hyperspace requires fuel. Now you can see that it requires six fuel per day to have our fleet travel in hyperspace. Now... This is somewhat important. If you want everyone in hyperspace to know who you are, keep your transponder on. It will increase the range that you can be detected at in hyperspace, which isn't necessarily a good thing. There's no penalty for keeping your transponder off in hyperspace. And over here is a hyperspace storm. When you get hit by them, you will take damage to one of your ships. Here it decided to hit the shuttle. Now if you have a bunch of frigates, that's not a big deal. If you have larger ships, it can be a very big deal, because it can be very expensive to repair. However, if you press S and go into uh, slow mode, I guess, you can fly through hyperspace storms no problem. It's a feature that was added recently. Let's turn our transponder on, because we're going into a system that is controlled by the hegemony. And these dudes. And let's go to Jungalda and speak with the station commander. He's going to tell us, Oh, hey, so you did, so you did Galatia. Nice. 
Well, we have pirates here. If you want to do something else, aside from that, have fun. You want to kill some pirates? We got pirates. You want to kill some? All right. So, what do we have beyond that? So we know we want to kill the pirates. But what if we're uncertain? This also ends the tutorial. So we want to fight the pirates. Well, what if we aren't very good at fighting yet? What if we just decided, you know what, I want money, and I don't want these ships, because these ships aren't too these ships aren't very good. So I'm gonna get rid of that one. And I want to get rid of you know, this is okay, but it sells for 8,000, or it scuttles for 5,200, plus some other stuff. Um, well, you know, don't know. I think I want to just get rid of some of this. On the black market, this sells for 12,000. Yeah, we'll just sell this, I guess. Well, let's let's strip it of everything useful first, I guess. What if we wanted to just do that, you know? Like, get rid of these things. Press T to strip them. And then we wanted to sell them. So, you know, that, we'll, we'll get rid of that thing. And this, uh, you know, not really feeling it. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. Uh, you know, that one, too. No, just not very good. And, you know, that one, too. Oh. But let's just say we wanted to get rid of everything in our fleet for some reason. And then we wanted to just simplify our fleet down to something that is maybe more manageable for us personally. Well, we can do that. So we will need to sell some stuff. But well, we can do that. So we can go down to something that's a bit more manageable to us. If we wanted to. We have no supplies. Oh, well, we have all the supplies, we just don't have any heavy machinery. But let's say we actually wanted to put something in storage. Well, let's down payment of 5,000 resources. And then we could, say, put all our stuff in that. And we just have to pay a amount of money equal to a percentage of the value. Because we don't want to sell everything, right? I guess we have our crew in cryo storage. But let's say we wanted to take maybe... Well, we have 50%. Let's say we wanted to do this. Well, we can. We know that there's a... And we're just down to one wolf at this point. We know that there is a... And we are aware that there is a battle going on over here with the pirates. And we just want to sort of capitalize on that. We wanted to get some free and easy ships. Well, we can do that. Typically, pirates will hang out around the jump points when they are raiding a system. So let's go look at this jump point, see if there's any detachments fighting pirates over there. Now, I don't recommend that you go down to one ship like this. It's generally a bad idea. But let's go see what's over here at this jump point. Well, not much, but there's something over here. So what is that? So we can see that it is an unidentified fleet. It's returning with recreational drugs. That tells me is that it's going to be a smuggler of some sort. Now, if we want to, we could say hello to them. And so we can get some information about the smuggler. So it'll cause a shortage. Gauging will not cause immediate hostilities. With the faction that it normally belongs to, though it will strain that relationship. So we can say hello to them, and they'll be like, hey, what's up? So that's a nice part about smugglers. You can attack them if you want to. But you don't necessarily need to. So over here we see a mercenary patrol, and he isn't attacking this, so this is probably another mercenary as well. He's traveling to Filknahild, so that's most likely a, tr a traitor from a shatter. Let's go over to the fringe jump point and see what's over there. Now upon completing the Glacier questline or skipping the tutorial, you will have 
a, an amount of income that was set up for you that is there to be a buffer to help you with the early game. As you can see, this guy is pursuing our fleet. We see that there's a hegemony detachment out there. We're going to emergency burn because we don't want to fight them. We're going to go over here into this and then go dark. Now the game categorizes running low on supplies as having less than a certain amount. Now that detachment is fighting them, that's good for us because it tends to create some um, ships <laughs> that we can take advantage of. We can also salvage. But it's a high risk and it's unlikely to find anything. So this ship uh, just engaged in battle, so we can join the battle on their side. As we see here, they're going to be running away, so let's just have our second in command handle that. And we can start getting some stuff that way. Now, we have these cargo pots. Let's go and look at those. That's just crap that we don't want. We have this sh drone tender here, so if you wanted to, you could recover that. And we could recover this Cerberus, too, if we so decided. As you can see, though, we require... See, supplies, the cost in our total supplies to repair the Cerberus, and then the amount of crew that we need. Now, unfortunately, we don't have enough crew to actually do that, so we need to go over here and multiple advanced Cerberus. So this is an easy way to get more ships if you are, if for whatever reason you don't have enough, um, if, you, if for whatever reason you can't buy more ships or acquire them in some other by some other means. Now a lot of our ships are repaired, so we're back to just costing us 1.1 supplies per day. We're using sustained burn to go faster, and we just want to go back to Jungala, where we're going to repair our ships. We're going to go to storage. We will unmock all that, go back to storage, bring on more crew, and then take on more supplies. So with those ships, we can have a bunch more supplies. Let's go ahead and go up to 50. And slowly, our military might can increase by ever so slightly. All right, I hope that helps you out in your endeavor to figure out how to play this game. Uh, go ahead and let me know in the comments below if you have any other questions. I can try to clarify things for you. But typically, you don't want to run out of supplies. If you do run out of supplies for whatever reason, your ships don't immediately explode. Instead, what ends up happening is it says out of supplies, no supplies, and your ships actually start losing combat readiness per day. So over here it's minus 4% per day. And when, and as we can see, after a couple of days they're losing combat readiness. When this gets to zero, they start ticking damage, effectively, and there's a random chance for them to explode. So you don't want to be too low on combat on combat readiness. So let's say you're out somewhere, you ran out of supplies, you have some ships to burn. You say, okay, well, what's the one I don't care about the most? Uh, I don't care about this one. Let's go ahead and get rid of that drone tender. Well, now we have 32 supplies. Wait, we have nine supplies. However, since we are over, um, oversupply on fuel and crew now, it's costing us more supplies. But as you can see, now that our ships are back up, we are only using 0.3 supplies per day just to maintain them, so we have 10 days worth of supplies right now. But let's say that, uh, so, so that's just one way to save yourself if you're out in the, if you're out in the middle of nowhere and uh, have no real way of getting more supplies. Alright guys, Go ahead and let me know what you think. Uh, I hope this helps you, whoever you are out there who's struggling with the tutorial and struggling with the game. Um, when you go, when you're in a system that has a comms array, comms array, you'll know because you won't be able to do certain things. 
Uh, specifically, you can mouse over something, you see where it says press F1 for more information. You can find out where you can buy that item for cheap and sell it for expensive. So we know that Karas and Ema, which is a pirate base, it is willing to buy supplies for 250 credits each. And it wants around three, th and it really needs around 3,750 of them. So if you were to show up to to Karas with 3,750 supplies that you bought at um, Asher, or 85 credits per, you could get quite the you could get quite a bit of credits out of that. So let's just say we wanted to do the math. Let's say you could do that. Well. And assuming everything stays the same, you could. So we can just do, we can just go and say the difference between 256. So 256 minus 85 would be 171 credits in profit. Multiply that by 100, by 1,500, and you would make 2,000. 256,500 credits like that. And you could just buy even more off of these until you could fill out all of that demand. And that's one of the ways you make a ton of money in this game. Calcedon is almost always... Calcedon almost always re requires more supplies and fuel and marines. Calcedon is over in uh, Kumari Kandom, which we can get to right now. They are controlled by the Lodic Path. They will ask for tariffs from you if you don't want to fight them. So you can just pay a tariff and they will leave you alone for a while. While well, you deal your black market dealing with the Lodic Path and make tons of money. All right, but I hope that helps you out, gives you an idea of what you're supposed to do. You can take bounties if we press E. We can see intel, and we can click on bounties. And usually bounties are going to be against the pirates. So if we kill pirates, we get 1,650 here, 1,000 there, and various amounts. And then there are pirate, there are base bounties as well. If you destroy this enemy base, you get 3,000 credits. If you kill this person and their fleet, you get that amount of money. So there's all kinds of little ways to make money. There are also typically... There are also typically delivery missions. So where can we go? Asharu. Let's get over to Asharu and see if they have a delivery mission for us. You want to avoid flying into stars or flying into the Coronas specifically. That will make you take extra damage. That will make you that will lower your combat readiness and cost you supplies. You don't want to do that. Let's go down to the shuttle. Let's go down to the bar and we can buy some of the weapons. We could also walk over and talk to some of these people. So this person is gray, that means they're at the independence. So she has an opportunity. What about this person? Okay, well, neither of them have what I was wanting to show you, which is you will occasionally run into people in bars who will tell you, I need this number of units of this thing to be moved to that location. And you can do a delivery mission for them. You can be a glorified truck driver, uh, a space trucker, <laughs> and make a decent amount of money that way. So all kinds of ways for you to make money in the game. If your fleet gets destroyed for whatever reason, you will basically just respawn at Jangala with like two random ships or so. It's not a big deal. Uh, don't worry about it. Your character stats won't be reset. Now let's just say you you selected some skills. You're know, flying around with them. You said, "Man, this loadout is garbage." Well, story points are actually kind of cheap now, so we can just reassign those skills, and then we can put them wherever we want. We can, we can click them until they go away, and then we can place them somewhere else. So there's all kinds of things you can do here. Also, if you were to say you wanted to reassign your skills 
and then you just decided, you know what? I don't think I want to. You can just cancel and get those story points back. Now. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, right, right, right. We need to hit reassign skills first. So you'll notice that some skills have an elite modifier. What that means is you get some sort of special thing out of selecting them. And when you recruit officers, those officers can, too, have... I think we're on one skill be elite. So let's say we want... Now, you are special in that you can make everything elite that you can get your hands on. So if you wanted to, you could have all these elite skills. They do cost a story point, though, which, but as I've said, story points are cheap. Don't want to worry about it. But all right, guys. Uh, I hope that's been helpful to whoever you are out there on Reddit or on the Star Sector forums. Uh, let me know in the comments below if anything's unclear and you need more help. I'll catch you guys next time. Or I'll catch you later. It won't be a next time for this one, most likely. But right, guys, my name is Infinmer, and this has been Star Sector version 0.95a, RC15. Go ahead, leave me a like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell, and just share the video with whoever you think would like it, and I will catch you guys next time. Bye. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. Please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing if you'd like to see more. I really want to know what you'd like to see more of, so just let me know in the comments below. Thanks, and see you next time. Bye.